Hello, my archive hombres. I hope you are having a good day. Uh, if you notice, things are a little bit different right now. Twitch chat was getting on my nerves a lot. So you know what? We're going to try something different for the remainder of this series. I'm just going to record it on my off time and play it on my own. The amount of backseating from people that had obviously never played it and were getting very frustrated with me for not following their advice was just getting to be a little bit too much. So we're going to learn, we're going to experiment on our own time without them. So we are going to head into uh, Safe Haven? No, Haven's Fall, Safe Haven. One of those two, the one with the carrier. The ultra brutal challenge is that infested. Rainer doesn't want to admit it, but these colonists don't look that healthy. Rainer also brought the Ripwave missiles for his Vikings. So Ripwave missiles is the armory upgrade that gives splash damage to the Viking. So I did play a little bit of this mission. Matt, open a channel to the Protoss. Actually, I played this. Let's see how diplomatic. I played this basically. And that means that I am going to have a decent idea of what's going on. However, the mission is pretty darn hard, so we'll see how it goes. Antaro Tassadar Salendis. Listen, with all due respect, your fleet needs to pull back. The people on Haven are no threat to you. The only cure for Zerg infestation is purification by fire. You know this to be true, James Raynor. I ain't gonna stand by while you wipe out a whole colony, Salendis. Not while there's still a chance we can save them. Then it shall be an honor to meet you on the field of battle. Your reputation as a commander is most impressive. I trust you will live up to it. Oh jeez, there's a lot of guys already. Uh, let's orb in one of these. I really like how Salendis is very respectful of Jim. I think it's pretty cool. Am I gonna... Please don't tell me I'm gonna lose this base already. Base is under attack. Jeez. What is this infested swarm? My goodness. Oh. Uh, I tried to... What? <laughs> okay. Um, Getting a little bit overwhelmed here at the 30 second mark. Did I just die? Dude, I... I'm trying to get Solendus over here, but she's slow. The purifier's coming into range of a colony base. So I have one thought, and it might be that the infested spawn rate is based on the in-game time that includes the time that I spent in the menu. Because I did spend a lot of time idling in the menu as I gave the intro, but that is so many infested. This might be... There's no way, right? They can't truly expect you to beat that. All right, we're going to give this a redo. This, <laughs> let's just... Right to the zero second mark, and we're going to go real quick and hope that things <laughs> are a little bit better. Okay, let's do that again. We're going to have to get some cannons up here as well, apparently. And hopefully Solendus can deal with this. Entaro Tassadar, James Raynor. I really like the intro sequence here. First of all, the way that he did it, but also I think this was a good way to introduce Lendis as a character. And I wish they had built her up more. And it seems like she, the little bit of characterization that she had in Legacy of the Void changed her quite a bit to be much more aggressive. I like the way that she's very, like, stalwart in her beliefs, but also very respectful. I think that's a cool combo for a character. Not while there's still a chance we can save them. Then it shall be an honor In a way that we don't see, Your like, Artanis is kind of similar, but he's much more willing to negotiate, for example. Yeah, this seems to be a little bit lighter pressure. So, what we need to do... Oh, hello. Attack waves are still fast and Sir, furious. The purifier has arrived and is on the move. So we got the purifier. I'll go look at it in a sack. Yeah, look at this. There's just a little trickle. I think maybe what happens is that as soon as you click Ultra Brutal, everything, all the stuff changes to Infested or something, and then they just bank up for a bit and come murder. I don't, I don't really know. 
but you there it's it's a huge difference <laughs> and i have a feeling that i'm the one that messed it up and i don't know how purifier's coming into range of a colony base all right let's watch the purifier so this is our purifier i have no control over it it just goes from place to place and base to base I'm going to try to get my economy up because I want to build a lot of carriers because they are available. And if carriers can arrive, then they should arrive. And of course I supply block myself. I haven't played StarCraft all day and uh, yeah, first game of the day never counts. You know how it is. I'm really hoping Slendish can just hold the fort up here for the most part. I'm going to have a lot of Kronos. And things are looking pretty good at this point. You just push these out as fast as possible and maybe go for the full wall here. Not quite yet. Because I do want to make sure that I have enough to keep building. Carriers are pretty slow to produce, but Chrono Boost is very powerful in this version of the game. 50% faster for 20 seconds on 25 energy. And that is a flock of Vikings that are heading over to shoot the Purifier. This is when it fires its beam. They're having a hard time getting through the shields. Which makes me think that I know how I want to deal Sir, with this. If this works, it's going to be sweet. Okay, so then we hit it. And we pull them this way. Through the beam. Oh, it's a beam come true. Goodbye, enemies. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Boom, boom, boom. And this is a big old attack we need to help defend. So the loading screen told me that the quality of my base, or the quality of the purifier is based on the number of nexuses I have alive, so I gotta keep them all up and at them. I also get scouts every time that it finishes, every time that a place gets purified. I brought Salendus down to help defend, and I'm hopefully not going to lose this base. Oh no, I'm attacking infested with my carriers, that was bad. Infested marines? Oh hell, Jimmy, I don't care for that notion one bit. The vision they give you is pretty good on this mission, honestly. Here, let's... Set up a little cannon cluster over here. Oh my goodness! That's more. I think I lost a carrier to all that as well. Oh, I'm getting a little overwhelmed. The aggressive waves are quite a bit here. Four, five, six. Oh, what are they? What? Oh, okay. That's ultra easy mode when they just all sit down. Did... Oh, dude. A Reaper hit squad just killed that entire base as I was trying to defend the Purifier. That was pretty sneaky. So that means that... Yes, it's gone from 6,000 to 4,000 shields remaining. Oh, and these cannons are going to get wrecked by the anti-structure damage. Protoss have arrived at another settlement, sir. I'm not chrono boosting properly either. Chrono, chrono, chrono. I should be able to afford more than I'm doing right now. I am up to six carriers, which is pretty good. Mothership is looking great. I see that flock. I'm heading over to it. Hmm. It's not started charging this time, which makes me think I'm not going to be able to do that same thing. And the infested are on top of uh, As soon as those cannons finish, I think it'll be easier to deal with. Cannon line is doing well, however, I do not like the space over here. It looks like I've gone through all the shields on my mothership. Gonna have to move to engage. Remember that they do area damage, so try to keep the carriers a little bit split. And put out whatever damage we can. All right, I'm gonna head over here because uh, fortunately is the word I'm gonna use. I don't have to defend any other locations, right? <laughs> fortunately, it's just here and here. Nothing up here to worry about. There's an attack wave heading this way. Ooh, perfect. 
Let's utilize this high ground and try to kill the Marines first, check who they're fighting, and then pull them back. Then we want to take the tanks down. Nice. No, no, oh, I guess it is nice you're all going to die because I'm Protoss. This mission is so much cooler with the infested on it. It makes a lot more sense. Oh, I saw that. The blue boys. Here they come again. Okay, scouts. We gotta fan out the scouts. Is that splash damage? Okay, I'm gonna stack my scouts. To make it easier on Jim, he's having a hard day. So how good is a scout? 16 damage against air times 2, 9 damage against ground, and it costs 225. I think if I had that extra mineral field up top, then maybe they'd be more affordable. However, all my gas right now is going to be going to... I guess I lost a lot of workers here as well. That's really limiting that count. This is still doing great defensively. Oh! <gasps> There's, there's rams up here. Mountain goats. Oh, that's amazing. I, They're really fat. Oh, they're so cute. And a giant saw blade of death. That's how they defend themselves. I love it. Oh, they must be clear cutting this forest for the Terrans. That's so kind of them. They're very slow. They've only got a couple trees down. <laughs> but you know what? They're trying their best and that's all that counts. Speaking of trying their best, more of these jerk faces. I've noticed that if I'm near the purifier, they like attacking the purifier instead of me, which is good. Oh, jeez. I think that's another safety, but a lot of carriers went down. And now I'm starting to run out of gas, so I'm going to start that scout production. A couple more workers over here. And the mothership just doesn't need assistance at this point. I don't think this base does either, but... Oh, hello. That is a big old boppy wave. We're going to try to use the high ground once again to mess with the AI. So carriers have a longer interceptor range then they have a launch range so you can pull them away after you've launched and you have a couple range to move backwards it can really be a life or death thing i know that the meme is there's no micro in car carriers but there's actually quite a bit of fiddle oh i had two guys on gas quite a bit of fiddling that you can do with them to get extra benefits out of them it's just not super visible micro a lot of the time Burn up. The I love how jealous. everything on the map just glows when the purifier beam fires. Watch your eyes. I hope you wore the safety glasses that we provided. Boom, boom, boom. So heading to the final colonist area. A little bit more defense here. I don't want to be caught off guard. That's a big thing. I'm going to try to have the purifier up here, myself behind it, so I don't get off ca get caught off guard by a bunch of scary things. A big attack wave or whatever. However, that means that this path is a little bit vulnerable. So those extra... Those aren't extra cannons. So those extra pylons will buy me extra time to get back over there. Not as long as the cannons would buy me, but that's okay. We want to make sure that Jim has a fighting chance. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Speaking of a fighting chance, that is definitely worth fighting. Well, let's see if we can intercept this right here. Yeah, just pull them back this way so that we're not that far away from the objective. Couple Vikings are on the way. Okay, that tank is going to be able to get some damage done. We want to fan out the Vikings first, but we don't have a long time. 
and just be careful about that AOE. Estimate Protoss arrival nice. at the next colony base within 20 seconds, sir. Just a couple more Vikings, and that is Jim's base right there. Looking at the money count, he's actually not doing great economically. He only has 50 minerals in the bank, so I've really been taking a good fight. Uh, do I have a warp gate anywhere? No. So we're going to send the scout squadron to intercept, while the carriers remain over here to help defend. Rat. Tat. Tat. I'm really glad that took three shots. If that took two, I would have been very... <laughs> Just rat tat. Well, remember remember these pylons? If those were cannons, they would have died more quickly. Strategy. So I'm going to assume there's one more attack wave that Jim is going to send against this mothership. Because it's almost purified. And that'll be the third of the Nexuses. And then for the next episode, there's actually something pretty cool that's going to be happening. So on Ultra Brutal difficulty, Mindhawk, the creator of this campaign, didn't like the way that you had to play the next mission. You were effectively forced to Turbo Turtle on it and not play the objective, and he felt that was wrong. Okay, I'm sitting in the purifier beam. That's bad. I was talking to him, and he was like, Hey, would you like to alpha test the updated version of it that I have that forces you to play it? Instead of, instead of the don't play the objective at all, it's force you to play the objective really hard, which is obviously way better. Okay, now we got the purifier. Let's go murder. So we're, you're going to get a first sneak preview on the new version of the map. It's not going to be a huge update or anything. However, it is going to play out differently on Ultra Brutal. So I guess it's time to go kill Jim now. He has a purifier with uh, 9,000 HP and 4,000 shields. With my army of death carriers. And this went perfectly on my first try. And there's nobody to tell me that I died at the 30 second mark last time due to a super death wave. We do have a fancy little button down here that I'm interested in pressing though, so let's uh let's do that and get on out of here. See how that goes. Bye Jim. It was nice seeing you. <laughs> Ooh, I like this. I like it a lot. All right, Purifier Mothership with 607 kills. How are you doing today? I'm pretty sure your kill count just jumped out by like 100. Oh, little Jim, you can't protect the infested colonists. You're a bad dude. I could see you protecting the uninfested from the infested, but just leaving an infested colony right there. That's not really good, Mojo. So guys, as we are cleaning this up, I would like some feedback. How do you feel about this compared to the normal style of just being Twitch VODs? Is it better? Is it worse? Just any sort of thought would be great. And as always, the audio splicing is phenomenal. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any thoughts on it, that would be phenomenal. Toss them into the comments. And if you don't, I will see you in the next episode. Peace.